Hello, Oikos family. Welcome to episode 13 of the Oikos family podcast. This is part three of playing, playing with your children. I hope you've listened to episode 11 and 12, whereby I spent some time just really encouraging you to start playing with your children or to make time to play with your children. I mean, I know all parents play with their children somewhere along the line, but I was here to encourage you and am here to encourage you, as I was on the previous episodes, to just really be quite intentional about playing with your children. And today I want to spend a bit of time sharing with you just some personal testimonies as to why I feel so strongly about this topic of playing with your children. You see, if you know a little bit about us or the Wood family or myself personally, you'll, you might know that we have home educated all the years from when our children were born. They didn't ever go into any kind of formal schooling. And I myself was partially home educated. And what comes with that is the whole learning lifestyle. I, I hesitate to actually call it home education. I definitely don't call it homeschooling because homeschooling is school at home. And that's not um, the lifestyle or the, the way that we have experienced education as been a school kind of environment at home. It's been more learning lifestyle. Um, and if we look at the word school in the dictionary, you can go and look it up for yourself. You'll see it's w- what its definition is. And it basically isn't what Oikos is, because Oikos is more about the learning lifestyle. Now, in our own family, we had uh, chronically ill children. So a lot of the time, they were suffering. And so what does a mother do? If you think about it, if your child hasn't been well, you don't really concern yourself with thinking about making sure that they've got their fractions for the day. You know, their fractions lesson is well understood or algebra or whatever it might be if they're learning addition if they're younger. You don't concern yourself too much with their mathematical skills if they've been really unwell. What you rather concern yourself with, um, I hope, I'm sure I'm presuming correctly here, is that the well-being of that child and you just, you know that they've been through it a hard time or difficult time with their health. And so you're looking for ways to help them to ease their pain or their suffering. And the one way that you know that you can ease their suffering is with play. And you know that if they could play and they could do the things they really love doing, that eases your heart and it eases their suffering. And so you then start to experience the benefits of playing and you see your child smiling. And that just softens your heart and delights you, I'm sure. And so because that was our reality and that we were surrounded with a lot of suffering a lot of the time, I had to work very specifically at finding ways to bring relief to the suffering. And of course, my my default was just to go to the Lord. Please help me. You used to hear me calling on him desperately often to ask him to please help me, to give me some divine inspiration on what I could do to help um, ease the suffering. And I can tell you from our own testimony that I never rushed to any formal books and I never went and grabbed the next lesson, the formal lesson or academic lesson, however you want to refer to it, um, to go and teach the children this. And this was going to make everything better because we're just going to do this next lesson. That was never the compelling I had or the conviction or the calling or the prompting. It was rather always something to do with bringing ease to their child in in the way of helping them to feel better and helping them to smile. And so what would, would I do? I would bring out art, for example. I know one of our children just loved to be able to color and draw and paint. And so my husband made a uh, like an art easel board. I did that on one of our live streamings. If you go and look at one of the live stream episodes in the live stream archives on the oikosfamily.coza website, you might find it there. I hope you can find it. Um, It's fairly identifiable in that the actual thumbnail image shows this easel, this wooden easel um, on the actual thumbnail image. So I hope you can find that. But I'm telling you about it because that is something that we did intentionally. You see, we made an art easel so that even when the child was suffering and unable to run around and play and do things, we could put this art easel on her lap, like as though a TV tray type of a 
um, scenario where you can, where a person who's an invalid can have a tray on their lap and they can have a meal in bed, a similar kind of concept. So that was one practical way that we went about bringing play and fun and something of pleasure to a child that was suffering. Now, I know I could sit here and give you example after example, and perhaps I will in the next few episodes. Maybe I must just list down a whole lot of practical examples that I can then share with you so that I can tell you all the different practical steps that we took to bring this topic, this scene, this picture of playing with our children front and center because it was so essential It was absolutely necessary to cope with the day. In other words, play became what was necessary for us to be able to cope with our day. And and it worked. Play worked. Formal lessons were not such a great idea when a child, if you think about it yourself, if you've got a splitting headache, it's very hard for you now to concentrate or if you're feeling nauseous or tummy bug or anything. It's, you know, you're not going to think about that uh, computer course that you were halfway through and you want to just quickly finish it. It's just going to have to wait because you're not feeling well. Okay. So we had that situation for a huge percentage of the time while we were home educating, as in the situation of somebody that was suffering or some bodies that were suffering. And so play became a big part of our learning lifestyle. And the result of that has not been something that I regret. It has not been a sense of me feeling that we missed something or that we neglected something or that the learning didn't happen and now we've got uneducated children. That is not the case because there was always time for the other. It just seemed to fit in there. In fact, let me just tell you what one of what I heard one of the moms say at the moms retreat this weekend. She said that I found that when we focus on the fun things, there seems to be time for the other formal lessons and we don't spend as much time on the formal lessons and we still get it done. So instead of starting the day and doing an hour of each subject and then running out of time in the day and not getting to the fun things, they switched it around and they did the fun things for most of the day and then they had a short time for the formal things, yet they were getting through the formal learning at, at a steady pace, as in they weren't falling behind or neglecting it or not getting to it at all. So I was really encouraged when I heard that mom's testimony because basically she had swung her day around. She'd put fun first and then and in that fun first time was lots of playing and then after that she added the formal learning and she found she had time for it and the children had time for it too. And the children were in a better place when they came to do that learning. She found that the lessons went better. And I think, quite honestly, that actually it went better because mom was in a better place. I believe that because mom wasn't expecting them to get so much done and to get all this done and finished so that we can play, you know, she did it the other way around. And she found that the formal learning it, it was more approachable and the children did better with the day being that way around. Now, that's not to say that your day is going to be better if you turn it the other way around. And maybe maybe you do need to do the formal first. You know, as you've heard time and again um, with Oikos, is we don't like to be prescriptive and tell you that this is what you must do. And at this time you do this. And when you finish that, at this time you must do that. That's not how we like to encourage you, the way we like to encourage you rather is to say, find what works best for your family and your the individuals in your family. And it is going to be uniquely different for your family to what it is for another. Just one of the very, very many blessings and values and wonderful treats of being able to home educate is that you can do that. You don't have to... Um, you know, do it according to a book that of rules that says that this is how home education happens because there is no such book of rules. Well, I hope there isn't. I haven't found one of those books of rules that tells you how you've got to do it and what time you must be up in the morning and what time you have to finish the maths lesson. Um, maybe there is such a thing, but I haven't discovered that and I'm glad I haven't and I hope you don't because I hope that this um, podcast is going to encourage you to Take the courage, actually, to turn things around a bit so that you can have more fun and you can play with your children and everything can be better. 
because there is an enormous amount of value and good and riches for you in this learning lifestyle. And I just don't want you to miss them. So I hope that this podcast helps you to not miss them. And I hope it helps you to have fun. So thank you for listening. Until the next podcast then, bye for now.